What's up everybody, another beautiful day in the Dragon Isle, so we're back with some more Mythic Raid Guides. Today we're taking a look at Mythic Senarth. Now I'll be going over most of the mechanics, how to deal with them and our overall tactic for this fight. Setup wise, we went with 2 tanks, 4 healers and 14 DPS. A gateway class is needed and preferably 1 or 2 roars and wind rushes, or both. Now this fight is pretty much a single target encounter. Yes, there's a big spider that spawns every now and then and yes, there's a ton of small spiders but single target builds are the way to go here since you either want to smack boss as much as humanly possible or put in unethical amounts of burst into the poor big spider ad. Unless you're a Destro lock and you just do both. Haha! <laughs> now that being said, what's new for Senarth on Mythic? Well, the sticky webbings have gotten stickier. They now wrap you in webs after 8 stacks instead of 10, much to my surprise. And they reduce your movement speed by 35% per stack and the debuff lasts for 1 minute rather than 30. And these small spiders on death detonation, players hit by this take 300% more nature damage for 30 seconds. So don't get hit by spiders boom boom ever, but if you're gonna fail, at least don't do it twice within 30 seconds. That's all you gotta do. And to make the entire fight that much more enjoyable, boss will also spawn a ton of swirly frosty tornadoes all over the place. These travels around slowly and if you get hit, you get knocked up and back and you take a ton of damage. So whilst you're playing out your favorite scene from Disney on Ice, you'll have to slip and slide between these tornadoes for massive enjoyment. And on top of this, the stairs leading up to each new platform is covered in ice and tornadoes. And this is where Roars and Gateways comes into play. So the simplest way of dealing with these stairs is to use Gateway on the first and last set of stairs and Roars wind rushes for the second set, as you won't have Gateway cooldown ready for that one to make it as clean as possible. So let's break those three intermissions down before we go over the fight step by step. Cue the picture! For the first intermission, you want a gateway going from the start of the stairs up as far as possible, and you want to take this gateway after the second chilling blast spread mechanic. So everyone spreads, then rushes to the gateway, and you'll land in the middle of the stairs, so you'll have to leg it for the last part, and this is where a wind rush or roar is extremely helpful. Once you've made it up the stairs, start running towards the wall in the back, as you'll get gripped towards boss shortly after. You can also try, if possible, to align yourself so you get gripped into the rock here, as it will slow you down just a little bit, however do not camp next to it and expect it to save you, because it will not. So it's always safer to just run away from the grip. Now the second intermission timing, a few seconds after the third gossamer burst grip, start legging it upstairs and use wind rushes, roars and things like that to help you get up fast. A range can move a bit ahead of melee or run right after the third grip, as they'll be able to DPS boss from upstairs, but melee can run a bit with boss to not lose uptime. However, you want to make it upstairs around the time the new chilling blast spread mechanic goes out, because it's not awesome to deal with it whilst running up the stairs. The third intermission timing is pretty much the same as the second one, but you run a bit after the fifth grip instead. And you can either instantly run after the fifth grip or use gateway here, and you can wait a few seconds extra nuke boss and then gate the way. Regardless, you want to make sure to be upstairs before the spread spread mechanic goes out yet again. Now with those pesky intermission stairs out of the way, let's break down the fight. So on pull you want to bloodlust and get the add near boss, tank it more towards the right side to bait the breath towards the entrance, rather than the stairs. Range keep in mind that the ice puddle spawns near players so you can somewhat bait these, but it's nothing you have to play around, just something you can do by positioning yourself well. You want to make sure to nuke down the big add, if you have a ton of DPS you can just cleave down this add, but if you want to say it just smash that arachnid. Hmm. Now if you get targeted by sticky webbings, be nice with them. Drop them as stacked as possible and not all over the place or covering areas where you need to go, like near the stairs. If you're a melee, move to the sides or out a bit and drop them. Boss has a huge hitbox, you do not have to camp right next to the edge. If you can remove snares, you can stack up these puddles and then just remove your snares to lose the debuffs, which saves you a lot of space, like paladin freedom, shapeshift, hunt Hunter, post haste disengage, etc, etc. When boss casts chilling blast, make sure to spread and play nice, especially melee. Again, huge, huge hitbox, just spread. And it is fine to stand in the ice puddles for a little bit if you have to to make room. When you get gripped, you want to either step into the web as the cast goes off or run far away and against it, whichever works better for you. Standing in the web is far easier, but will debuff you with movement speed reduction, so if you can't remove this debuff yourself, make sure 
venture to call for a freedom or tiger's lust or even hunters with a cunning pet. Big brain pet. Then you want to make sure to keep moving left with boss and following your second chilling blast spread you gate and leg it upstairs. Deal with the grip then nuke boss and get ready for the second big ad. When this spawns everyone needs to swap to it and hard nuke. The longer it's alive the more damage it takes. If you have DPS cooldowns coming up shortly before that ad make sure to save him. The faster it dies the better because not only does it slap the raid and tanks a ton it spawns more icy puddles which is not amazing. So again you want to pull spider near boss and a bit to the side of it towards the stairs you came up from due to the breath. Then for the second intermission stairs run a few seconds after the third grip using roars wind rushes and movement speed. And the third intermission stairs is after the fifth grip using gate and or wind rushes and roars. Now for the final phase if possible you want to be below the 30% mark when the boss is done ascending and lands on the final platform but it's still doable on a higher HP it's just harder. So for this as soon as you get up range spread and line up around the edges of the platform and melee around the boss. In this phase all your chilling blasts will spawn a glacial plume that deals damage and knocks players back if they touch them. For the very first set in this phase everyone should soak their own plume as there's not a ton of raid damage at this point and it helps a lot with space. Just make sure you position yourself so you don't get knocked off the edge just into the platform. Following this melee wants to drop theirs around the boss towards the back of the platform where Senarv lands and range along the edge. A few seconds before you get your first knockback everyone in the raid stacks in front of the boss and a tank that gets web slapped make sure to stack up with them as well. Doing so usually means you'll have one or two small spiders near boss since everyone's stacking which will die and detonate on the tank clearing that web. Just make sure everyone else dodges the spiders on death AoE if possible and if the tank happens to get yeeted away anyways you'll need to taunt or drag down a spider on top of the poor tank to break him out. And following a pushback or if you run out of space tanks should pull the boss down a bit towards where you came from to make more space. And then it's pretty much rinse repeat drop plumes along the edges never in front of the boss or in the middle of the platform stack before knockbacks heal heal and heal some more. Another tip for the last phase if you're a class with immune or the tank that's not actively tanking you can run around and clear a lot of these plumes and tanks can get their webs cleared with blessing of protection so you can for example have one tank solo tank a lot of that face while the other tank runs around and clears plumes all the time. Melee will like this. <clears throat> yeah that's pretty much it for mythic senar. Let me know what you think about this fight on mythic and if you have any questions at all about this encounter hit me up in the comments or become a patron or twitch sub and get access to the stanky discord where you can get help with anything rating related. I'm also streaming all of my progression rating on Twitch Wednesdays, Thursdays and Sundays. So make sure to check that out. And don't forget the usual stuff like comment, subscribe and ring that notification bell. And uh, yeah, thank you all for watching and uh, I will uh, see you next time.